well at this late stage of the Congress. My friend Rudy, I'm, I'm very happy to present my friend Rudy. Some of you might have seen him on a stage like this one before. I met him at a, at a talk that contained the name of an animal. Some of you might remember that, that name. They were called Longhorn. Anyone remember Longhorns? Rudy held a talk at uh, camp and years later Microsoft discontinued the product. Thank you, Rudy. Unfortunately, they turned it into Vista, so it didn't really win. Those of you who don't know, Rudiger Weiss. This is not part of the of the talk, by the way. Rüdiger Weiss, a professor for cryptography, what else should I say? A just great presenter, I'm going to leave the stage. Thank you, and as my friend Markus Beckedar told me, good morning, it's a, it always fits, good morning. And you've been told that it's a long story, and I had to, I couldn't help but grin to see that I'm, I'm I seem to be stuck in a time loop in some parts. Very importantly, a large part of the crypto disasters that we have right now are crypto zombies that have been around for 20 years. Uh, and Finally, Microsoft has been replacing them. Unfortunately, uh, this is not just a friendly encouragement. Also, do we, do we have a Windows 10 botnet or is it a gated community? Is, does Microsoft simply want to create its own ecosystem? The answer is yes, but also, well, as... Uh, as a computer scientist, um, a botnet is a is a computer network where uh, where a third, a third party can um, execute arbitrary code on my system. These are exactly the end user license agreements that Microsoft is putting into its products right now. And people always thought I was I was joking when I was saying um, yes, you can't prevent the updates, but you can delay them. And people were looking at me at, in a funny way. But I was. Um, when I said that it costs quite a bit of money if you want to um, avoid using untested updates. And people told me I, I, they, I shouldn't exaggerate, and that's the impression that I get as well, because when you look at the license terms, especially those uh, of the test version, where Microsoft is trying to, um, to make sure it gets just about all, all rights imaginable, Ex excluding maybe your firstborn child, it's it's a bit disconcerting and persisting as I am. You no, know, persisting as um, the CT, my favourite um, magazine is. There's a cover story that um, uh, that tells you how you how you can prevent updates. So it's not a it's a, not a necessary update, but it's one that you're trying to be false. Uh, that Microsoft is trying to force you into. And it's so annoying that there are customer protection agencies that are trying to, um, that are targeting this. And, um, you know, at a certain age, you start to, might start to get a bit suspicious when people t say, here, take this, and you don't want it, but they persist. So my experience has made me a bit suspicious when people come at me with that kind of marketing measures, but apparently Microsoft decided this is a good approach. And to be, to put it simply, as we, you know, uh, we used to discuss if some some problems, some security problems, might be abused by Microsoft. We now have have a confirmation, because Microsoft removes the control over your own hardware and software. And um, if you remember that uh, trusted computing uh, thing. 
that you might remember from uh, from ages ago. They they're using that now to um, to change their system and um, to change the opinion of the security your opinion of the security of the system. And I want to understand these problems. And it's I understand that Microsoft says we patch it better than the average user. That's definitely something you could discuss. But as always, it's always, uh, I always, uh, it's, it's always a tricky situation when people are forced into their luck. So, I um I read that uh, article in that um, in the magazine I just talked about. I um I was wondering if I should maybe turn it into text adventure to make it um, make it more understandable. It's simply not a way that you're supposed to treat your customers. But let's um, backtrack a bit in web history. 2002 we had a debate on trusted computing on the trusted computing chip that has become a central, um, a cr crucial point of Windows 10. This is um, Ron Rivers, the R in RSA, wrote that, that the right way to look at this is you are putting a virtual set-top box inside your PC. So you're turning your computer into a set-top box. It's no longer your computer. It's, it's more like a computer that you leased from Microsoft. And it's essentially um, the normal software as a service model. And you can, you can accept all of this, and that's all well and good, but it becomes less nice when you, when you force people into it. And we're hackers, so what, what's happening here? We're handing all our security to Microsoft, but the question is, can we do that? And at the last few congresses, I spent a large part of my slides on Microsoft security problems, many of which I quoted from the Heiser security tickers to make them fairly objective. And, uh, and even today, they're still taking a large part of my, of my slides, so I can show you current problems that come from a, from long ago. This crypto zombie problem is that we're still using uh, ancient algorithms like SHA-1 or, well, we're now at a congress where many, many people are born in an age where the crypto wars were essentially over, but we we keep saying that if we if we weaken our systems, it doesn't simp it does not only weaken the current system but also all future system because this problem of backwards compatibility is um, is how how many attacks works uh, was what enables many attacks and. Um, Please allow me um, to to speak about an, another gator community, namely Apple, who thought it would be a good idea to block an app that was that was um, coded that was made in the environment of CCC because it contained objectionable content. As a hacker, I always like objectionable content, and it was essentially crypto hacking. And uh, well, it, it gives me this. Uh, this feeling that I'm I'm trapped in a time loop, and this was a this was a talk from 1999, and Apple used this to censor an app from the App Store. And if I if I look at uh, look at Microsoft uh, Apple's track records with censorship, I'm I'm getting seriously worried, and just um. Uh, I'm not using this just uh, to be able to show you these um, pictures of a younger me. Uh, we we had nothing back in the day. All we had uh, was uh, we could only write our maths on a, on a flipboard in horrible English. But <laughs> this talk was watched before uh, by 280 people in the past 15 years uh, until Apple got upset. Uh, the T-shirt is fun as well. I, 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 I liked it back in the day, but well, 
nobody really worried about it. But 15 years later, the biggest American company to, makes a fool of itself. Um, besides taking this opportunity to show you pictures of a younger me, it's something you have to talk about. Apple censors harmless mathematicians who make uh, scientific talks because apparently it's objectionable. This is simply something that makes you scratch your head. Uh, and Apple was never very happy about export restrictions, which shows us that sensors are just in a bad zone. Uh, as soon as we start censoring something, whether it is for religious reasons, like the, uh, like the Green Party in Berlin-Kreuzberg, um, who think that their taste is everybody's taste, you're, on a, you're in a downward spiral that can't be stopped. And these people who censor things shouldn't be uh, surprised if, um, the hacker, if the hacker community is laughing at them. However, back to the technology. So the freak attack has been just a rollback to the old uh, security problems, and Microsoft has discovered it quickly and decided, hey, it's updated a bit hard, but we'll try a workaround that secures the system. And what happened? Well, it was downloaded, just nothing worked anymore. After downloading it, no further updates could be installed correctly, and that was on the 7th, and on the 13th, it became more and less and less funny. Microsoft decided uh, once they remove old cryptography, they just throw out SHA-1 in the same time. After 20 years, it's a good opinion decision. However, at this um, thing, uh, here they rated wrong. They changed the Linux dual boot configuration and the sy and systems that ran proper Linux systems had were destroyed by the parallel installation of Windows. It just didn't boot. And I want to mention that if we think that all our Linux systems are changed Windows system uh, computers, and we want to use this control Linux systems or the control system that once a Windows admin decided, oh, I just want to make the system more secure, the Linux installation is broken, that's, that's really, a stu uh, ma ma can make us really angry. And we notice that Microsoft doesn't look at the thing at all. Another stupid thing is that the people weren't able to change uh, anything in the update without destroying their BIOS settings. And that makes us really afraid. We love to create um, uh, and usually that just doesn't work anymore. They, that sounds good, but it is not um, uh, good if we notice that we make many mistakes that doesn't don't have to be asked politically but they're just because of uh, wrong wrong decisions and one really strange thing was situation was when shortly before I made the camp presentation I was at a, at a black hat conference they presented that it is possible to um, uh, the, uh, force up Dates, uh, from different person, and then there was this my pr favorite slide. Can you remember what that is? Do you know what that is? We should remember that name. It's quite clear. So, nobody of you knows that. A small hint. You, we might have to reboot the system for it to be there, but you shouldn't ignore it. But Microsoft says update type is important, and we're a bit confused about it. So I won't be that is fair. It's so unfair that Microsoft doesn't know what to do. It's really interesting. And says something where I like stupid jokes. If we have more, inf more information, we can always call the uh, U.S. government. 
And if we trust them, th we can also r call the educational part. And if we really think it's strange and we want to call, if we want to have help, who do we call? Well, the U.S. military, of course. So th those are the few words that are on the wrong, uh, on the wrong place. Well, that are two and a half super jokes. I'll have another slide of bad jokes about that, and then I'll say why that isn't funny at all. First of all, the usual joke, every time I make this slide, I get a warning in my LaTeX program. So, just enough joke, what does that mean? If Microsoft has an update with a completely broken name, that means that no human has looked at it, because every human would have said, mm, that's a really strange name, are you really, really sure? No electronical p person has looked at it, because even the electronical uh, would have given a warning. Nobody also had noticed, oh, that's an URL string. Let's see whether these URLs are written correctly. So uh, let's forget all the funny jokes. We have a situation where Microsoft has made no explanations about it. There are no explanations. Uh, Heise said that they wanted to ask, they didn't answer. I have since then learned. Um, it's a saying by our, uh, by some high German political part of the answer would make the uh, population uneasy. I think. Yeah, that some of the information might uh, make the part of the people uneasy. And I would know that I wouldn't have to change them in December. However, what could happen to change after all those funny things, like these random strings, t that I will have to add another slide? Well, I've already assumed it's, it sounds a bit arrogant, but these we cryptographs like we help people. We say, hey, you can ask what do we need so that we can help you. Do you need some secret that you can uh, dif d differentiate you from a uh, attacker? We'll try to make it shorter, but please do take care of those secrets. We'll ca take care of everything else. However, if Microsoft uh, um, goes ahead and Science and, and publishes or uh, and or passes on a secret signing key of the, the Xbox Live system. That was one of the few situations uh, where I was uh, happy was that because that is one of the few signs that things like that just uh, dangerous things only happen by mistake. So I'll go hang out of the window so that if I'm here next year. I will probably have problems to get even worse than that, because what what can you do worse than leak a key that can create a system by Xbox computers? That just the things that do infrared on all the apartment, so they don't only know what we uh, read, but they also know what they do under the covers. So oh, they know that. Oh. Yeah. Well, maybe people should think about what to do about it, but just put it on there with a sign significant from Xbox, uh, Xbox Live, possible to put another software on it to, so you may trust. And then next sad thing, all these funny things about Microsoft, the funny jokes about Microsoft update problems are not at all funny because that means all the quality control of Microsoft is a f absolutely failed. I've sat down with enough uh, intelligent informatics technicians uh, that see it, it write how to write tests that all of that slides through. So if there's a human that sees an update with that name, he will notice that. Every script you can imagine that has tests all these things that means all these funny jokes we jo laughed about are really not funny if you have systems that are important. And I want to say even if we don't have any Windows except of Xbox, we know that in the 
um, uh, Fire Brigade systems, they are still Windows boxes, probably Windows XP boxes even. But that's a system that's barely in internal, which I'm not going to put on the uh, subject list on uh, in Hamburg. Microsoft is not, apparently can't do that. They don't have the update system under control. And can we save the system? And that's the second critical point. Microsoft does, uh, since Windows 8, Microsoft Trusting Computing Module, uh, so they request require the Trusted Computing Module and they have a switch off key. And they say that we can, instead of the Microsoft security key, it's, it's architecture and we have our own architecture. Uh, was in a part of Windows 8 to boot without Microsoft system. However, that was removed from the Microsoft requirements. And uh, with among Windows 10, the systems cannot be, uh, many systems cannot be switched off. They tried that with Windows 8, but we have the situation, and I really have to criticize Heise it the first time here. Heise said that we don't have to uh, be confused, uh, th that we have uh, problems because all the Linux systems have uh, signed keys, uh, signed boot parameters. However, uh, Microsoft, there's a problem. Microsoft signs a Windows bootloader and then the Windows systems boot. Can Microsoft call back the key? Yes. Has Microsoft deactivated stuff? Yes. Has Microsoft uh, done stuff with uh, deactivated stuff without proper reasoning? Yeah. That's one bad part. The second bad part is that that's all right that Microsoft and uh, Microsoft is a great company. It's one of the biggest. Uh, enters, uh, talk, um, spend much money to, for the Linux kernel. Also want to be active. Signs certain uh, distributions, but only signs that which is, that is given to them. And it's not about old and exotic software, however, but all the development system of control so, uh, of free software. We don't have to sign every key, every step signed. There will be successful open source software. However, the real development that everybody can work towards it is is real problem. Has a real problem if we have to have if every change signed by Microsoft and other these combination, they don't have it on it. They don't let us repair it. They destroy our boot parameters, and that is something. Even even though if. Uh, decided to work quite well with Microsoft is something I'm not uh, uh, willing to accept at all. And I've, with a smile, I saw that they have uh, angered the um, uh, 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 some people from Baden Württemberg who care about the uh, r rights of uh, users. So back to 2003, this Microsoft decision uh, to, towards mark domination. To a, to a lockout, so you will be locked out of your own system, in fact, and we don't really own our computers anymore. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a thing that uh, we see the um, inventor of the public key crypto has said, um, well, it's uh, just a requirement that we have under control our own keys on our own devices. But there's something positive to say. Some US companies like Apple uh, have addressed these problems that uh, from end-to-end uh, -end encryption, uh, this is the right, uh, the right description, and here we have the opposite thing. To repeat, this is not something um, abstract. Some, uh, Microsoft has, uh, has uh, done this uh, several times. Microsoft has uh, several times has deactivated uh, systems without uh, reasoning, maybe Last time I wanted to, uh, they gave out the reasoning, my hair come grayer and grayer because we were not sure if they really gave out it and so on. So I repeat, the um, problem is Microsoft is changing its strategy. Windows is a service now. We only uh, get money by looking at your data. So this is now a problem. If uh, there is uh, really technical errors in this segment, then Microsoft could come back with the ideas um, if this is not a problem anymore. 
Um, one more historical slide. Slide in this uh, TPM module, we have a secret key where it, which we cannot access. So, who can access this private key? Hopefully, nobody. But um, if these keys, uh, well, these keys are generated outside the P TPM and then written into it. So somebody has a cop might have a copy of it, and then he has a general key which, which works every A. Ditch, this uh, is of course interesting for the NSA, etc. So, um, well, this is a historical slide, but uh, the reality has uh, taken it in. So I could have uh, removed this slide, this slide, but. Yes, so uh, once again, the, the, pro, pro, the manufacturers of these things are usually not in the US, but in China. So when I'm not, when I cannot uh, really trust a democracy like America, then I um, have an even greater worry about uh, an authoritarian state. So here the it's, uh, it cannot be possible that we have uh, an infrastructure where uh, somebody who can simply file has a key to everything. So, last things. All these things that we said, UFE backdoors, uh, below the, below the um, uh, virus scanners, hard, uh, software, etc. And... Uh, the answer, if uh, something is uh, broken by UEFI, what can we do when can throw away the, the hardware and there's nothing else we can do? That's uh, somebody of a really uh, good company who said this, um, which uh, worries me when, uh, yeah, when, when people in uh, high positions in industry have an anlexionic uh, meaning like we in the hacker com community. So, and while the uh, uh, Lenovo is based in uh, Peking, and I'm really sure that they are not affiliated with the government. Uh, we had a Dell backdoor that, uh, well, you know, it didn't really work with the Microsoft strategy of let's publish our private keys, maybe somebody else can use it. It's scary. And the only thing that pleased me as a cryptographer was the Juniper backdoor. Because you may remember, um, I showed you a, an elliptic curve generator last year and said that there's a backdoor in there. And we cryptographers warned people, you know, just a few days after after these things uh, came up, and said, you know, there's an open door here, don't use it. But people, of uh, I mean, companies, of course, use it. Look at Juniper. Uh, but the nice thing is, a backdoor in an elliptic curve there is just a few bytes. And somebody took these bytes that were an NSA vector and um, th threw them away and replaced them with its own vector. So you have the, you have the, <laughs> you have a gate to Fort Knox and um, remove it and put your own gate in place. Now it's really scary though. This problem is, I mean, it's obvious when we outsource all our IT to Microsoft and say they. They provide updates, they know what we need to do. This means that if um, we have, you know, we, we can't really put pressure on, on Microsoft there. And this is something that's um, rather unpleasing. This is my last slide that's only cut and pasted for a, for, for, for a small part. The, uh, the federal government said uh, quite clearly that if you want to build a secure environment, yes, you, you can do that, but the people have to be able to um, make their own decision if they want to to enter that closed system and they need an opportunity to get out of that closed system again. That's been in there for a while. Now we have the problem that um, when we when we uh, use things, we, we should use um, up-to-date cryptography, but Microsoft 3 out SHA, many, many companies 3 out SHA-1, but these hooks still exist. We need cryptography that, um, that protects privacy, um, like 
perfect forward secrecy. And all these things have been have been in the standard for a while. We need international certification of the TPM uh, production. Uh, to just to say it again, I'm part. I'm a company of. Uh, that uh, that makes TPM. I have a, uh, have a master key for everything, so I, I can access all the systems. That's not that can't be right. And um, you attract a nasty crowd if you have that. So it it's a way for companies to protect themselves if they open up their system, if they open up their certification and booting code for relevant software uh, for Windows 10 and 8. And we also need to check for monopolies because Microsoft is no longer the dominant company. As Elmer just said, we looked at some of the old Windows talks. It, they used to have 90% market share, and that's no longer the case in some areas. And yet the normal hardware that people use in their personal computers is still most most still runs Windows for the most part. I mean, there's the Apple word, but that's another that's another subject. But uh, most personal computers are still Windows uh, are still running Windows. And finally, I'm going to say some nice things about the German telecom and weird as still T-Systems and Microsoft. There was a small article that some of you might not even have noticed that Microsoft and T-Systems would uh, had, um, had uh, sketched out how a German cloud might look. And I'm always a bit skeptical of these weird national cloud propositions. But this is interesting for some companies. I mean, they can. Uh, they can say we have a have a server in Germany. This is not sufficient according to the current regulations because companies that are based in the United States they might be they might be forced to abduct their data to the United States. This won't lead us to world peace, but it means that companies have um, legal certainty that they'll they'll only be in trouble if they. Um, if they run counter, run counter to German law, and that um, you know, uh, other countries' secret agencies won't be able to read everything they write, and this legal security is being opened up to private consumers as well. Or at least I hope so. I think this is a reasonable expectation. I mean, that you have um, you know these things from the real world, where you have. Uh, legal recalls should be available in the digital world as well as well and i hope that um the eu eu stance on safe harbors is going to lead to change here so let's make sure that the uh, privacy standards we fought for survive microsoft's corporate policy thank you very much for your attention <laughs>